Well, hey, crafty friends. Oops, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video tutorial, we're going to work with a few things that are my absolute favorite things. Um, the first is uh, vintage buttons. Um, we're going to be doing some stuff with these Mother of Pearl vintage buttons. We're also going to, also going to be working with Painter's Drop Cloth. Um, and I'm going to tell you how to prepare it to use it. On one of the projects, I'm going to use a 8-inch um, embroidery hoop. We're going to use some low temperature hot glue, a couple of stencils, some ink. And I'm going to repurpose this uh, frame from Goodwill. And so lots of fun stuff happening. Uh, as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. Feel free to ask questions. All that good stuff. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to do is show you just how to stencil on painter's drop cloth. And um, the, you can write this down. The brand that I like the best of painter's drop cloth I haven't bought it in a while, but it's Everbuilt, E-V-E-R-B-I-L-T. I looked to see if I still had the label, and I don't. Um, I usually get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, it's sort of this oatmeal-ish color. It's pretty thick, and it's going to be super stiff when you first take it out of the package. So, you're going to want to wash it. And then wash it on hot, dry it with some towels or something. Then wash it on hot again and dry it a second time. And that will make it just really nice and soft. And you want to do all of that to your painter's drop cloth before you cut it. Okay, one time I made the mistake and I um, tore some strips off of my painter's drop cloth before I put it in the washing machine and oh my gosh it will it will unravel I mean this stuff gets frayed edges pretty easy and it was a huge mess in my washing machine so um, don't cut it until after you have washed it twice and dried it twice and um, yeah so that's the basics with painter's drop cloth um, it's completely different from working with canvas, which is, just for example, it's this stuff. It's um, canvas deck cloth. This is different. Do not wash this. But you are going to want to wash your painter's drop cloth. Okay. Um, so, you can stencil directly on your uh painter's drop cloth after you've washed it and dried it and washed it and dried it. There's nothing you need to do to prepare it. Um, it's pretty thick, so I don't think it's going to go through this onto my desk. Um, and I'm going to be using this stencil, which is part of this one. It's called Every Seashell Tells a Story. It's awesome. Summertime. Uh, stencil and you guys are gonna you're gonna love how these two projects turn out seriously and I have a bunch of button projects that I pulled out to show you in just a minute okay we're gonna be using this piece right here but um, this is the whole stencil it says every seashell tells a story it has all these different shells and you can do a ton of different things with it so I am and I am going to be putting my, this piece, on an 8-inch embroidery hoop, which I picked this up at Walmart in the embroidery section of the craft department. And what you're going to want to do, we're not going to put it on until after it's dry, but I want to show you the basics. What you're going to do is you're going to unscrew the little screw thing that's going to be at the top. And this just loosens how tight the outer ring is around the inner ring. And it will allow you to take the two pieces together. Then, once this is dry, you would basically, it needs to be a little bit bigger. You 
you would basically be doing this and then trimming the back. So that's what the plan is. Some of this I'm going to have to do off camera because we're going to need to wait for it to dry. But the second project is all good and ready to go. And this was good to do it because now I kind of have an idea of where to place it. So it's going to be cute. And just going to lay that down and push it down. These uh, green stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com are mesh. They're adhesive. They're slightly stretchy. They're um, easy to clean. They, uh, wa they wash up just with some cool water. And you can use them over and over and over and over. So the set of this Every Seashell tells a story. This is the set I got either one or two summers ago, and I'll just put all my summer stuff away in a folder um, once fall comes, and I'll pull my fall and Christmas out. But you can hang on to these. They're a great basic for your uh, crafting stash. Okay. And I'm gonna get this done so that we can get on to the really fun stuff. This is ink, which ink is um, designed to be used on fabric and on ceramics, and it needs to be heat set to be permanent. I just used an iron on this other piece, and I'll do that with this one too before I start on the next step. So I'm just gonna push my ink. This is white, you could use whatever color you want, but I think with the mother of pearl um, buttons that we're gonna be using, white makes the most sense. Okay, and this is what it looks like. And there's our little starfish, which we're going to make it dimensional by adding a whole bunch of teeny vintage mother of pearl buttons. We're going to put it on this, and it'll just be just be a fun little piece. I mean, I could even set it on something like this, an easel. Um, or I could hang it on a wall, or there's lots of things that could be done with it. So this is what it looks like. And I will come back to you with uh, this project um, completed, because I'm going to have to finish it off camera. Um, okay, so let me set it over here. And let's move on to the project that we're going to be doing, which is this right here. Okay, this is part of this stencil. Same process exactly, white ink. Um, I used some tape to cover up the B and to cover up the words in the center because I just wanted to use this beautiful wreath, okay? And um, this is dry, I've heat set it with the iron, it's all good to go. Uh, this was something I picked up at Goodwill for $2.99, I think it's a beautiful frame and I had, um, I had a project on it uh, that was a church, uh, but I made two, so I decided to repurpose this and use it for this project, okay? So I just pulled the wood pieces off, and I've torn and cut this into the size that we need. It's going to be slightly off-center, and I'm just going to put a little dab of glue in each corner to hold it down, and then we're going to start building this wreath out of vintage buttons and it's going to be so cool. And I'm going to show you the other projects. I'm going to tell you all about buttons and where to get them. Um, if you are one of those people who inherited your mother or grandmother or aunt or any family members or neighbor or best friend, if you inherited their button collection, 
I want to hear about it. So tell me in the comments. I was not fortunate like that um, because my grandmother and my mom both sewed a lot. But at the time that my grandmother passed away, I didn't know that I was going to ever like buttons. So I didn't ask her for any. Um, it didn't even occur to me, to be honest to you. Okay, so I'm just going to put a couple little dots just to tack this down. And I left a good bit of the fringe on. Can you see it? This was a, uh, a process off camera to get ready to go live, to get this piece the correct size that would work for this project. So I kept cutting it and I kept pulling strings and more strings and more strings and more strings. And I may trim a few of the strings eventually. Okay, so this side right here of this wreath is open and we're gonna do a big pile that looks probably like a whole bunch of flowers right here of medium and larger size buttons. And then we're gonna do the little teeny ones like little flowers on this. And it's going to be beautiful. Okay, let me show you a couple of the projects that I've done in the past using buttons. And um, to say I love buttons, especially mother of pearl buttons, it would be an understatement. Because if you look around my craft room or look in the closet where I keep my projects, every other project seems to have a vintage mother of pearl button on it. This was a Christ in crafting that we did oh, a month or two ago. And it was a reverse canvas project. And um, I used a lot of buttons for that one. Um, this was something, I made a bunch of trees at Christmas time. This is canvas duck fabric. And we used buttons for that. I like to put buttons on candle garters. I love to put buttons on pillows. This is the retro, um, retro flower stencil from magnoliadiy.com that I just used yesterday. It looks very different, doesn't it? Because this is in gold ink and this is in uh, the berry blue. But anyways. Um, so I just have a big variety of buttons here and um, even like my little flowers here have buttons on them. There's just so many things that you can do with buttons. My all-time favorite, and when I say all-time favorite button project, I really mean it, is this. This is in my family room. Um, you guys, I got so lucky. Well, I don't like the word luck. I was so blessed one day when I was at Goodwill and I found this frame. Isn't it gorgeous? For like two or three dollars. And um, this right here is painter's drop cloth. Ow, I just got a sliver. And I... Um, Sorry. I put the painter's drop cloth over a piece of thin cardboard that looks like this. This is another one. And then I just put it in this frame and did a cross. And this is what's sitting in my family room on the wall uh, by the wall where you turn on the light switches all the time. But during Christmas, I made an insert that is a Christmas tree. Let me show you that. And these are these are just some of my very favorites. So this was the 
across. And here's the tree. I'm not going to put the whole thing back together. I just want to lift it up and show you. So this is what I do at Christmas time. What do you guys think so far? Did I say any of my normal stuff? Uh, you need to know the exacts in the cross. I don't know what that means, but I made this like three years ago. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't even know the exacts anymore. Um, I just Googled different styles of crosses, found the one that I wanted. Um, I kind of traced it. I printed it on computer paper. I kind of traced it on my painter's drop cloth. And then I just started building my cross with layers and layers of vintage mother of pearl buttons. I can measure this for that person who was asking. But, you know, you may not want yours to be this size because it really depends on the frame that you end up using. So this is 8 inches tall and about 6 inches wide. And I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So here's another project. I'm just looking around and there's buttons everywhere. Do you guys remember when we did that? I still remember the days I prayed for the things I have now. This is a tarnished silver platter that I painted, stenciled, and made these flowers. Um, this is a wreath, a braided rope wreath with pulled string burlap flowers, and there's a button in there. There's just buttons everywhere in my craft room because I love buttons. Okay, so let's start on this project right here. And I think it's going to be beautiful. I don't know yet where I'm going to put it. But um, where do you get vintage buttons? Uh, well, you can order vintage buttons on Etsy. Uh, you can also Google vintage buttons and you can find people who sell those. I like to go to this antique. Uh, it's, a, it's like an antique fair that's held once a month in Cumming, Georgia. It's called the Lakewood Antique Market. And at the antique market, there is a lady who has a booth that all she sells is buttons. So I've gotten buttons there. I've bought buttons at um, antique shops, uh, just like in a jar. But I'm pretty particular at this point. I really just am interested in the white buttons that are actually made of mother of pearl. And I'll show you one way that you can tell. If you look at the back of the button, I'm looking for one that will be easy, um, you can see sometimes a little bit of the shell. Because these are carved out of shell. Have another, this is another one. So, um, so I picked up buttons at um, at that liquid antique market. I think I ordered some online. I found them at Queen of Hearts Antique Mall. Um, maybe you have a friend or a family member that has some, or maybe you are one of those fortunate ladies or men that inherited their grandmother's um, collection of buttons. But this just shows you that I'm... <laughs> serious about it. I love it. Okay, so my plan was to do some bigger buttons here and then scatter some little buttons throughout. And I wanted to show you guys that Mother of Pearl can come in these gray and purpley colors or it can come in this white and sometimes they're iridescent. Sometimes they have a little yellow hue. Um, so it can come in different colors. And when I'm building this area right here, I'm going to try to include a variety 
add colors. So what does everyone think? Yeah, if you would sprinkle this video, that would be awesome. And thank you to everyone who's done the stars. Okay, I'm just using my cheapy, cheapy uh, True Bonder Cool Shot Low Temperature Hot Glue Gun. Um, this is a project that you could get burned, so don't use a hot temperature glue gun. And I'm going to start with the buttons. I'm getting kind of low on my button supply. So I'm going to start with my buttons that are not fabulous. And I'm going to kind of build my base with the ones that I don't especially love. And I'm just gonna put a little dab and push my button into it. If you hated how this turned out, you could pull all your buttons up and just pull the, um, Pull the glue off of them. But okay, let's start building in a few buttons that I like better. And I have some of these that uh, the back is where you would have sewn it on a garment. Um, so I'm going to use a couple of those too. Let's see where I'm going to put this. And I'm going to ignore the glue strings for right this moment and I'll come back later and deal with the glue strings then. So what I want to do is I want to have it look like a big pile of buttons right here in the place where the bumblebee is on the stencil that's kind of spilling out and on the top layer I'm going to be using um, some of the buttons that are uh, more special, in my opinion. Some of my buttons are even a little chipped, like this one. You know, in the I hate to say olden days, but that's kind of what it is. In the olden days, people, uh, when a garment was worn out, they would clip the buttons off and save them. Look how pretty these are. These are that, um, like this, it has the little thing on the back. So they wouldn't throw anything away. And I've had a lot of people tell me that they remember playing with their grandmother's buttons when they were little. I don't remember doing that, but um, I wish I did. It sounds wonderful. So I'm just starting to pile these up. I think I'm going to need to put some more glue under here just to hold it. Get that all worked out. Um, so I once I get these basic buttons on, then I have some fun ones to work with. Like, look at these. Or this one. Or look at this carved button. Oops. I've also had a few followers, I forgot to mention this, um, people that sent me buttons, which, oh my gosh, that's so incredibly kind of you. I, um, that's just something that I cherish. I love things that have a story and a history, and buttons are one of those things for sure. This is how it's starting to look. 
as I'm just piling things up there. And before I came live, I sorted through my buttons to get a bunch that were pretty that were little out and ready to go for one area. strings on my hand. Pitiful. Okay, let's start to Did you, oh, it's, it's, it really is such a neat idea. So, um, let's see who was saying that, Sandra Little. I just, this is the kind of stuff that I love. Um, I wish I knew who owned these buttons at one point and what was their story, you know? What kind of a garment did this come off? Um, what was going on in these people's life at that time? That is the kind of stuff that I'm, I get excited about. And I have opted not to put anything um, in the center of this wreath. But you could use, I mean, you could have used this part of it. These stencils are so versatile. I mean, you could just use the Always Be Kind, you could just use the B, you could just use the wreath, you could use the whole thing all together. So I could have put the Always Be Kind there if I had wanted. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down just a couple more and then I'm going to think about it and not rush and I will come back off camera need more glue. And add more buttons. start to get kind of paralyzed. Okay, so let's say that this is a good start. What do you guys think? I'm going to make it fuller so it kind of spills out over here and a little bit thicker. So I'll have to dig through my button dish a little bit more to get some more. Now let's move on to the small buttons that I have pulled out. And a lot of these did actually come from one of my followers. Um, it was, I think it was Mary Kovac, if I remember right. Uh, I can't remember for sure. But these are teeny. A lot of these were used on baby clothes. And they're just so sweet. So I'm going to just lay a bunch down and fiddle around with them. I'm going to go winky wonky winky wonky basically. And 
And some of these buttons have four holes. Some of them have two. So I want a good variety. Some of them are really thin. spots I'm going to do two buttons okay. and I'm going to start gluing This really does come together so quick. And can you imagine if these were family heirlooms, these buttons were passed down. Um, instead of being living out their life in a jar and not getting appreciated, um, these buttons are on something that you could hang up and you could pass it down to the next generation as a piece of family art. I, I love that idea. And I didn't make all of the buttons be, uh, be turned all the same direction because I think it gives it a little bit more character, makes it look more random. Isn't this beautiful? Linda says she loves Winky Wonky. Yeah, so if you love this idea, let's keep playing with it for a little bit. Um, then I would love to do a cool. I didn't even take some of these buttons, were clipped right off the clothing, and they still have the thread on them. And I think the thread makes them beautiful, so I didn't take that off. I want to dig a little bit and see if I have any more of these teeny, teeny, teeny little baby buttons. There's a really sweet one. Oh, I just saw a baby, baby, baby button. Where'd it go? Here it is. Is that it? I don't know where I'm going to put this. I might put it upstairs in my bedroom. But it's not going to get put in my craft closet. This is going to be something. Ooh, I could do something cute like that. It's not going to live in my craft closet for sure. that's been washed twice and dried twice to make it really nice and soft and um, and then I'm just using my low temperature hot glue gun and I'm ignoring the glue strings I will get those after I'm finished with the project. At the start of this video, I showed how you can look at the back of your buttons to see if they're real. And after you've been 
crafting with the buttons for a little while, you start to get an eye for it and you can spot them. The ones that are real buttons versus the ones that are not. This one is so sweet. I wish you could see. It's teeny, teeny, teeny. I'll try to get a close-up picture. And it's um, carved, which I think is precious. Instead of making this um, framed piece of art, I could have done it on a, like a canvas pennant. Um, there's so many things that you could do. I'm going to have to definitely um, tack down my painter's drop cloth better. If you're going to do this project, I also recommend that you don't think about it too, much, too seriously and that you don't try to plan everything in advance because this is really a better project that's going to look random. That's the look you're going for. Like I threw these buttons up in the air and this is how they landed. What do you guys think? I'm going to continue to work on this off camera, but I think it turned out beautiful. And um, I probably won't put it right next to this piece, but they could be very pretty going together. What do you guys think? Let's see which way do I need to go? my favorite buttons. You wish you had room for one of those. You're going to have to look around. Oh, Linda has a button box. So who, who inherited their grandmothers? And how did it come to you? Was it in a jar? Can you remember? These were the other things I showed just a minute ago. This is in my um, kitchen on this thing on the wall. And this is a ton of buttons that I just covered this whole frame with. And this is the insert that goes in the cross thing. Um, who can remember as a little girl or a little boy playing with their grandmother's buttons? I hear stories about that all the time. And I just think, oh, that's so sweet. Times have changed so much. Um, and then I had little boys who weren't interested in um, sewing or any of that kind of stuff, but I think it's really pretty. Now my plan for this other thing, which is probably dry enough that I can put it on the embroidery hoop. Where did I put that? Here it is. My plan for this is basically to cover it with buttons so it looks like a starfish made out of buttons. I went to Queen of Hearts today, you guys. Um, that's that antique shop that is close to my house that I love so much. I went there looking to see just if by any chance I could get a jar of buttons. And I'll have to share this picture. There was a jar of buttons, but it was a big jar. 
and it was like $160. And I honestly, I'm going to have to fiddle around with this to get it centered, but um, I couldn't tell whether most of the buttons in it were plastic and modern or if they were vintage, because I really only want the vintage mother of pearl at this point. But this is the plan for this. I may put a piece of raffia or hula skirt or something up here to tie it and um, I'll get it centered better. I'll get it all ready to go on the embroidery hoop before I start gluing the buttons. And yeah, that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Oh, Debbie says she has her mom's buttons. The starfish with buttons will be super cute. Yes, and you know what? This stencil has other great shapes. Like I've seen clamshells on Pinterest. Look on Pinterest. Um, that are made of buttons. So you could do something really cool. I just right now don't have enough of the large buttons, the large mother of pearl, to do anything. Uh, really beyond just this little starfish. All right, do a this or a this or say something to me in the comments and make sure that you've liked and followed this page and turned on your notifications if you want to see what I have coming up for Saturday and then for Christ and Crafting on Sunday. Um, I got two new Christian stencils from magnoliadiy.com. They were delivered this afternoon. So I'm going to pray about which one to use for Christ and crafting. But on Sunday, that's my favorite day of the week to craft. And I would really love to have you join me. So if you do a this or this, uh, say something, check to see if you've liked and followed this page and turn on your notifications, then your odds of actually seeing me on Sunday do improve slightly. Uh, anyways, I also have a text alert program and I will do a new post here on DIY Dreaming. Just look for hot pink and it will have the number. It's not my actual cell phone in case you're wondering. Um, it's a text alert service that I pay for every month. And um, it's how I let people know, usually 10 to 15 minutes before I'm going to go live. And it's how I let them know what the subject will be for the live. So I would be glad to get that information for you. And I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. I hope to see you on Saturday and on Sunday for Christ and Crafting. And then all next week as well. Here we'll be doing crafts that are going to be quick and easy. Like this was pretty quick and easy. Can you imagine? I mean, can you believe that it was that quick and easy? Um, they'll be sometimes a little different, like using vintage buttons to make a starfish or to make this wreath. Um, they'll be affordable. Using painter's drop cloth is a super affordable background and this was uh, a Goodwill object. Um, they're going to mostly involve faith, family, and flowers, and maybe some seashells here and there. So, have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope to see you guys again. Thanks for watching.